Hi. Today we will tell you the story of a U.S. infantry fighting vehicle named after General Omar Bradley. As you can see from the title of the video, we will talk about M2 Bradley. About the history of the creation of this infantry fighting vehicle, weapons and armor, modifications, operation and combat use. If you are new to our channel, subscribe and enable notifications about our new videos so that you don't miss anything. M2 Bradley was created in the second half of the 1970s based on the XM723 prototype. During the design and creation, the experience of combat use of the Soviet BMP-1 and the design features of the German BMP Martyr were used. By the way, we have a video on the channel about the Soviet BMP-1 and BMP-2, now you will see a notification on the right. The M2 Bradley was supposed to be the best alternative to the M113 armored personnel carrier in terms of protection and armament. The M2 Bradley crew consists of three people, can carry up to six marines in the landing section. It is based on the M3 Bradley combat reconnaissance vehicle. Bradley entered service in 1981, a total of 9,753 copies of all variants were produced. It was used by U.S. troops in the wars in the Persian Gulf, Iraq and Afghanistan. Work on the creation of an IFV for the U.S. Army began in 1964 as part of the MICV-70 Mechanized Infantry Combat Vehicle program and ended in 1981 with the adoption of the M2 Bradley. During these works, several variants of the IFV were created, which were both variants of a major upgrade of the M113, and fundamentally new. The first attempt was the Pacific Car and Foundry Company Vehicle XM701 Project MICV-65. In 1965, six prototypes were assembled. The XM701 had a reinforced booking compared to the M113, embrasures in the sloping sides, and a 20mm gun in a two-seat turret. But the disadvantages did not allow it to be adopted. Insufficient speed over rough terrain, excessive weight and overall dimensions. The next attempt to create a lightweight IFV based on the M113 was made by FMC Food Machinery and Chemical Corporation in 1967. The prototype XM765 created by it consisted of 90% of M113A1 parts and assemblies. The shape and dimensions of the hull were changed, the frontal and side armor was reinforced with steel plates, and a 20M M139 automatic gun was installed. In 1973, due to the end of the Vietnam War, spending on new developments for the Army was drastically reduced and work on the XM-765 project was effectively curtailed. Modification XM-765 AIFV Armored Infantry Fighting Vehicle with a 25M automatic gun KVAB-02 Orlikon was adopted in the Netherlands, Belgium, Turkey and the Philippines. The MICV-70 project was considered too complex and expensive, after which in 1971 it was decided to create a simpler and cheaper IFV. Now let's talk about the armor and protection of the M2 Bradley. Hull M2 is welded, made of aluminum armor grades 7039 and 5083. The armor is differentiated, with different angles of inclination. On the M2AO and M2A1 modifications, the front and side armor is separated by a combined steel screen plus aluminum plates with polyurethane foam filling the gap. To increase mine protection, the bottom is reinforced with a steel sheet. The use of aluminum alloy armor provided a weight reduction of 10 to 15 percent compared to the equal resistant steel armored hull. In the upper frontal part four of the first series M2 AO and A1, a flat folding breakwater shield was installed, eliminated starting with the A2 modification. For combat operations in infected areas, the IFV is equipped with a filter ventilation unit. FVU serves only the crew seats, the landing party must rely on personal protective equipment. The engine and transmission compartment is located in the front right part of the body. Access to it is through a hatch in the upper frontal armor plate. The driver mechanic is located in the control room located to the left of the driver. The driver's hatch cover is tilted back and has a locking mechanism in the open position. In this photo, you can see U.S. military preparing the M2A2 at the forward base McKenzie in Iraq on October 28, 2004, before the combat operation. The option to install additional booking in the form of a box-shaped modules of dynamic protection on the hull and turret of the IFV. 
The two-seat turret with a rotating hatch is located in the middle part of the IFV to the right of the longitudinal axis and has two hatches. The commander is on the right of the gun, the gunner is on the left. The commander's hatch cover can be lifted to provide an all-round view. The gun and machine gun are mounted in a single mask, the gun on the left, the machine gun on the right. The gun and machine gun mount is stabilized in two planes. The turret rotation mechanism is electro-hydraulic, the vertical guidance drive is electric. The BGM-71 tow launcher is mounted on the left side of the turret. In the stowed position launcher pinned to a board and covered with front flap, combat is driven by an electric motor in a horizontal position. The landing compartment is located in the rear of the vehicle and is separated from the combat compartment by a partition with a passage. The landing party is located in the compartment according to the scheme, two in the rear part of the starboard side, two near the ramp and two in the middle part of the left side. Seats for paratroopers are cushioned, with folding backs. The landing place of each paratrooper is equipped with prismatic viewing blocks and a fixed 5.56mm automatic M231 FPW in a ball installation. Access to the landing compartment is through the rear folding ramp or through the upper hatch. In combat conditions, an accelerated landing is made through the ramp, in other cases, the door on the left side of the ramp is used. The top hatch cover has a pyramid shape and leans back. The upper hatch is mainly used for reloading the BGM-71 tow launcher. Five missiles are located on the port side behind the landing section. This photo shows the loading of military personnel through the ramp. IFV modifications A2 or A3. Distinguishable installed on the sides of the IFV, the entire height of the armored hull, armor plates with a thickness of about 30 mm. The M2 Bradley armament includes a 25 mm M242 Bushmaster gun, a 7.62 mm M240C machine gun, a BGM-71 tow, and six fixed 5.56 mm M231 FPW submachine guns modifications of the M16A1 rifle. Automatic 25M gun M242 Bushmaster developed by McDonnell Douglas. The M242 Bushmaster allows you to fire both single shots and bursts. The rate of fire is 100 or 200 rounds per minute. The maximum rate of fire of the M242 is 500 rounds per minute. The gun has a two-tape feed that allows you to quickly switch from one type of shot to another. The gun's automatics are driven by a 1 HP electric motor. Ammunition is unitary, the ammunition supply is equal to 900 shots, 300 of which are in the tower, and another 600 in the shell's firing line. Two main types of projectiles are used, the M791 armor piercing discarding sabot tracer and the M792 high explosive incendiary tracer. The M791 penetrates homogeneous armor up to 66 mm thick at 1000 meters. With higher armor penetration, the M919 armor-piercing fin-stabilized detecting sabot tracer was adopted in 1990. The M793 target practice tracer is used for practice shooting. The gun has a slotted muzzle brake. Due to the fact that the maximum elevation angle of 60 degrees, it is possible to shoot at air targets. The spent cartridges of the gun and machine gun are removed outside the tower. BGM-71 tow is used to destroy enemy tanks. The launcher is located on the left side of the turret. The BGM-71 produced by Hughes Aircraft has a cumulative warhead of 127mm caliber, powder starting and main engines. The armor penetration is 600mm BGM-71B or 800mm BGM-71C, the flight speed is 278 meters per second, the firing range is 65 to 3750 meters. Guidance is used semi-automatic, with the transmission of control commands via a two-wire cable. After starting the ATGM, the operator must hold the aiming mark on the target, so the start can only be made from a stop. Manual reloading is performed through the upper hatch of the landing compartment. The ammunition is 7 ATGM, two of which are in the PU, and the rest in the landing compartment. The fire control system includes a gunner's sight and a commander's sight. Periscope sights, with day-night modes, provide 4 and 12-fold magnification, have an optical connection between them. For shooting at air targets, there is an external circular anti-aircraft sight. Both the gunner and the commander can control the weapon using handles with trigger buttons. 
In case of failure of the electric drive, the commander can control the weapon manually. The M2 is equipped with an 8-cylinder 4-stroke V-shaped turbo diesel engine VTA903T manufactured by Cummins Engine Company. The engine power is 500 HP at 2,600 revolutions per minute. The torque is 1390 Nm at 2,350 revolutions per minute. A hydro-mechanical transmission HMPT500, manufactured by General Electric, is installed in a single unit with the engine. The capacity of the fuel tanks is 662 liters. The range on the highway is 480 kilometers. Suspension M2, individual two-shaft torsion bar, with torsion bars in elastic pipes. It consists of six supporting and three supporting rollers on each side. The machine does not have water jet propellers. The movement in the water is carried out by rewinding the tracks at a speed of up to 7.2 km per hour. The IFV's buoyancy margin is small and sufficient to move only in calm water. To increase the displacement, a canvas cover is used, which is deployed around the hull. As you can see in this photo. Next, we will tell you about the modifications of the M2 Bradley. If you want to learn more about a particular modification, let us know in the comments on the video. The M3 Bradley CFV is very similar to the M2 Bradley IFV infantry fighting vehicle and is fielded with the same powerful two-man 25mm Bushmaster cannon turret with the coaxial 7.62mm machine gun. It only varies from the M2 in a few subtle ways and by role. The M3 is classified as an armored reconnaissance and scout vehicle and does away with the firing ports found in the M2 series. The M3 also carries more tow missiles as well as more ammunition for its 25mm and 7.62mm guns. M2A1. Introduced in 1986, the A1 variant included an improved tow-2 missile system, a gas particulate filter units GPFU, NBC system, and a fire suppression system. By 1992, the M2A1s had begun being remanufactured to upgraded standards. The GPFU system was only connected to the vehicle commander, driver, and gunner, while the infantry squad had to use their own from mop suits. A seventh infantryman was also added just behind the center of the turret. M2A2. Introduced in 1988, the A2 received an improved 600 horsepower 447 kilowatts engine with an HMPT-503 hydromechanical transmission and improved armor. The new armor protects the Bradley against 30mm APDS rounds and RPGs or similar anti-armor weapons. The new armor also eliminated the trim vein that made the Bradley amphibious and covered up the side firing ports. Spaced laminate armor was installed to the hull rear and spaced laminate track skirts protected the lower hull. A semicircular shield was attached to the turret rear to add more stowage space as well as act as spaced armor. Kevlar spall liners were added to critical areas. The troop carrying number was reduced to 6, eliminating the periscope position behind the driver. After live firing testing, the seating and stowage arrangements were redrawn. These upgrades raised the cumulative gross weight of the vehicle to 30,519 kg. The M2A2 was qualified to be transported by the C-17 Globemaster III. M2A2s were all eventually modified to M2A2 odds or M2A3 standard. M2A2 odds and odds E. The Operation Desert Storm and Operation Desert Storm Engineer improvements were based on lessons learned during the first Gulf War in 1991. The major improvements included an iSafe Laser Rangefinder ELRF, a tactical navigation system TACNAV, incorporating the Precision Lightweight GPS Receiver PLGR, and the Digital Compass Systems DCS, a missile countermeasure device designed to defeat first-generation wire-guided missiles, and the Force 21 Battle Command Brigade and below FBCB2 Battlefield Command Information System. The internal stowage was further improved and a thermal imaging system was added for the driver. The infantry squad was again increased to seven men, six of whom sat facing each other on two three-man benches in the passenger compartment, with the seventh back in the position behind the turret. An MRE meal, ready to eat, heater was added to the vehicle to assist in the preparation of food while in the field or war zone. With the retirement of the Dragon missile, the vehicle had the option of carrying some Javelin anti-tank missiles. M2A3. 
Introduced in 2000, the A3 upgrades make the Bradley IFV totally digital, with upgraded or improved existing electronic systems throughout improving target acquisition and fire control, navigation, and situational awareness. Also, the survivability of the vehicle is upgraded with a series of armor improvements, again both passive and reactive, as well as improved fire suppression systems and NBC equipment. The A3 Bradley incorporates the improved Bradley Acquisition Subsystem IBAS, and the Commander's Independent Viewer CIV. Both include a second-generation forward-looking infrared FLIR, and an electro-optical TV imaging system, and the IBAS also has Direct View Optics DVO, and the iSafe Laser Rangefinder ELRF. The CIV allows the commander to scan for targets and maintain situational awareness while remaining under armor and without interfering with the gunner's acquisition and engagement of targets. The A3's fire control software FCSW combines laser range, environmental readings, ammunition type, and turret control inputs to automatically elevate the gun for range and to automatically generate a kinematic lead solution if a target is moving. This functionality, very similar to that of the M1A2 Abrams, allows the gunner or commander to center the reticule on a moving target, lays the target, and achieve a first round hit, without the need to fire sensing rounds and adjust aim. The FCSW incorporates a thermal-aided target tracker at function that can track two targets in the FLIR field of view and switch between them, primarily intended for employing tow missiles against moving vehicles. The FCSW also allows the turret and gunner's sights to be slewed automatically onto a target that has been designated with the CIV. M2A4. After the Iraq War, the Army began researching engineering change proposals ECPs for the M2 Bradley to buy back space, weight, power, and cooling capacity reduced by the addition of armor and electronics hastily added during combat. ECP-1 will work to restore mobility and allow the vehicle to handle more weight. As weight increased, the Bradley got lower on its suspension, which reduced ground clearance. This decreased mobility on rough terrain and left it more vulnerable to IEDs. The effort will install lighter tracks, shock absorbers, a new suspension support system, and heavyweight torsion bars. ECP-2 will restore automotive power with a larger engine, a new transmission, and a smart power management system for better electrical power distribution to accept future network tactical radio and battle command systems. The first Bradleys upgraded with ECP-1 were fielded in mid-2015, and the first to be upgraded with ECP-2 will begin fielding in 2018. Vehicles that receive both the ECP-1 and ECP-2 upgrade will be designated A-4. On June 14, 2018, Base Systems Land and Armaments was awarded a contract to produce up to 164 M2A4 and M7A4 Bradley fighting vehicles using existing M2A3, M7A3 and M2A2 odd saw Bradleys. Now the most interesting part of the video. For those who have seen it through to the end. Combat use of Bradley. During the Persian Gulf War, M2 Bradleys destroyed more Iraqi armored vehicles than the M1 Abrams. 20 Bradleys were lost, 3 by enemy fire and 17 due to friendly fire incidents, another 12 were damaged. The gunner of one Bradley was killed when his vehicle was hit by Iraqi fire, possibly from an Iraqi BMP-1, during the Battle of 73 Easting. To remedy some problems that were identified as contributing factors in the friendly fire incidents, infrared identification panels and other marking, identification measures were added to the Bradleys. In the Iraq War, the Bradley proved somewhat vulnerable to improvised explosive device IED, and rocket-propelled grenade RPG, attacks, but casualties were light, the doctrine being to allow the crew to escape at the expense of the vehicle. As of early 2006, total combat losses included between 55 and 150 Bradleys. By 2007, the Army had stopped using the M2 Bradley in combat, instead favoring more survivable MRAPs. By the end of the war, about 150 Bradleys had been destroyed. Thank you for watching to the end. Bye.